Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 56. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video and scroll way down to the Finance Excel class section and you can download this workbook. This is the second workbook for chapter 6. All right, here in this video here, we want to we're going to look at a zero coupon bond. That's a bond that does not play, pay regular interest payments or coupon payments. There's just a face value it promises to pay back in the future. We need to build an amortization table, a yearly amortization table, to show how the balance changes and what the implied interest is. Oh, wait a second. I thought a zero coupon, we just had a face value. We got some money in today and then we paid this out in the future. Why are we talking about interest? Because for tax purposes, a zero, the bond issuer is going to have a get to record a deduction on their tax return, which is a non-cash interest expense, which will give us a cash in benefit. And the bond holder will have to record a non-cash interest revenue, which is a disadvantage. That's cash out, even though the corporation is not paying this the issuer is not paying interest and the bondholder is not receiving any interest revenue for tax purposes you still have to pay taxes so our amortization table we built a number of amortization tables so far in this class it will help us greatly here because we can see each year what our expenses and then from that figure out our tax implications now the first thing is for an amortization table we need to figure out what the uh, amount the balance is right because we're going to have some balance less than our th face value we pay at the end um, and then over time it will increase each each year it increases by an amount which will be considered interest all right so we're going to calculate the price of this bond using present value the rate is going to be yield to market divided by two times a year yes for tax purposes they're going to treat it as n equals to semi-annual payments NPER years times two semi-annual comma there's no payment oh even though we're gonna have implied for our valuation there there are no payments it's just one future value now I'm gonna put a minus here from the point of view of the corporation they're paying that out and that'll tell us the present value positive which is how much money is coming into the corporation now the next step is to calculate the balance and I'm going to calculate the interest each period and then we'll simply add. Just like before when we did our amortization table, we've done amortization tables for a discount bond, a premium bond. We did amortization table in chapter 5 for consumer loans. Ah, but here's the problem with this one. This is yearly oh, and we're accruing interest twice a year, semi-annual. Well, we need a somehow we need a single rate here. No problem. Guess what? We can calculate the effective annual yield. Remember, the effective rate is always going to be greater when the APR or the yield to market has an n greater than 1. But the effective rate, if we can take our yield to market and our number of compounding periods per year, we can calculate the effective rate which tells us the actual rate at n equals 1. So I'm going to use the effect now earlier in the class we saw there can be a trouble with effect if the n, the number of compounding per, per times per year, is a decimal. But here it's an integer, so no problem. I'm just going to click nominal, yield to market, comma, and NPERY number of compounding periods per year. There it is. We have a uh, rate that gets us all of our interest with an n equal to 1. So I'm going to say equals the balance times our interest. Right? And I'm going to lock this by hitting the F4 key. Just as our earlier amortization tables, that's all that's added. Amortization, we just add for, for the bonds, we're adding the interest. Our consumer loan, we were uh, looking at the interest and principal. Here, this is a deep discount, so we're just uh, adding in interest. Now, this is straightforward. We say whatever the balances was plus the accrued or implied interest for tax purposes. Now we can copy this down. And sure enough, the balance gets uh, increases, increases, increases until on the day we have to pay it back. The account on our book says $1,000, and that is what we owe them. This, in essence, is a, a yearly um, 
book value of your liability. Now, the main point of this video is now to figure out the bo bond issuer and bond holder have to deal with this interest for their tax returns. Now, the bond issuer, this is a tax expense. So guess what? They get to deduct it. And it is non-cash. There's no cash moving. So that means you get to record $39.55 on your tax return and re reduce your taxable income. Now think about this. What is it? What happens when you have a deduction? Think about one dollar. You put one dollar as a deduction. That means you just avoided 35 cents. So you anytime you can avoid paying a tax, it's as if cash flow is coming in. So here our calculation is implied interest. That's the deduction times our tax rate. And that is the benefit cash, in essence, a cash flow in for the bond issuer. Now we're going to have to lock this one right here. I'm going to hit the F4. Right, and so this avoidance of taxes paid cash flow in. Benefit makes zeros attractive for companies who want to conserve cash in the early years of the project. Yeah, not only does the zero because you know we're accruing interest. This interest is adding up, and then we pay the the bondholder back the full amount at the end, right? So not only are we avoiding paying out interest like we would a coupon bond, but we have this awesome tax uh, savings, which is like a cash in. All right, but the poor bondholder has to record their interest revenue. So get this: uh, when they record this thirty-nine dollars, that's adding to their revenue on their tax return. So 35 cents extra for each $1 they add. This is a marginal tax rate. So here it's just minus this. Remember we talked about that. If you type a minus and, and enter the formula with a cell reference, it puts the equal sign in. So these poor uh, investors are recording this as a revenue, even though they didn't get the cash sent to them. All the cash is sent at the end. Now, here's the deal. This, the tax-exempt investors that need to know the future value with relative certainty, like pensions, right? Because pension, when your uh, pension fund is saving up because they know how they have to pay off in the future all these pensions, right? So the, these are great when you need to know future value with relative certainty, and you have uh, a tax exempt status. You might also put them in a tax deferred retirement account. All right, uh, so that's a little bit about zeros. Uh, amortization table for uh, yearly interest when we had an n equal to, and the tax benefit and tax disadvantage for a bond issuer and a bond holder. In our next video, we'll actually compare zeros and coupons and look at the cash flows for those two types of bonds. All right, see you next video.